Hey, good morning, everyone. As you can see behind me, I'm here at All Souls Catholic Cemetery in Long Beach. And the reason I'm here this morning on such a really gray, ugly day is because I'm uh, here for an event in Long Beach. And so I wanted to take this opportunity to stop by and uh, visit the grave site of an old friend of mine, a very good friend, uh, Carl Verzilli. He died back in 1986 and I've never been to his grave. And so I've been wanting to for years now, and so I'm finally here, and I've been searching for the last hour, and I can't find his grave. I, I called the office a couple of days ago. They gave me um, the location, you know, the section where he's buried, the, um, uh, the row, and the, the grave, but I can't find it. So that happens a lot. I mean, it's not easy you know, to find uh, graves uh, sometimes. And uh, this is the second time I've tried to find a friend in a, in a cemetery and I haven't been able to. Now this one, I'm just wondering if maybe he is buried in the section where they say it is, or in the grave where they say it is, but maybe, I thought you might like to see the, uh, the plane going over. Long Beach Airport is uh, very nearby. <laughs> So hopefully you can hear me over the uh, the roar of the plane engines. So anyway, uh, where was I? Um, I'm wondering if maybe he has an unmarked grave. It does seem to be in the section where they say he's located. There's just grass. There, there are no other uh, uh, headstones. So I'm going to have to call back, call the office back on Monday when they're open and find out if uh, maybe... Maybe he's in an unmarked grave. That would be, to me, that's very sad. I don't know why, uh, you know, people choose unmarked graves, especially famous people. There's so many famous people with unmarked graves, and uh, I've never understood that. So uh, I don't know if any of you have an idea of why famous people especially want unmarked graves. Let me know in the comments section. I would love to know your take on it. Uh, I can't come up with a really good reason. It... Uh, I would think if you didn't really want a marked, a marked grave, you didn't want anyone to know where you were after you died, you would just be cremated and have your ashes scattered. But then again, maybe not everyone wants to be cremated. So, I did find another grave that I was looking for as well. I figured as long as I was here trying to find my friend Carl Verzilli, I would also look for Frank Zamboni. And uh, so, if you're not familiar with uh, Frank Zamboni, He's famous because he invented the Zamboni. I think it's just called the Zamboni. When I was growing up, I did a lot of ice skating. It was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, after an hour or so of skating, the ice would get really rough, so they would have everyone get off the ice, which you know if you've, if you've ever ice skated. And then the Zamboni machine would come along and uh, take five minutes or so and go over the ice and um, uh, spread new water and it would freeze. And uh, it was a way to uh, have fresh ice. It was just in, you know, within a few minutes. And it was called the Zamboni machine and a guy would get on it and ride around the ice and spread the water, which uh, turned to fresh ice. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure that the Zamboni has become like a cultural, uh, pop culture term. And, and I didn't realize growing up that it was actually a person's name, that it was actually invented by Frank Zamboni. I just thought the Zamboni was the name of this uh, contraption, this uh, little uh, thing that people wrote around the ice, uh, ice rinks. And uh, I just thought that was the name of the, um, the vehicle. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go inside uh, the gates now and, and show you where he's located. Uh, it was actually pretty easy to find. He's just right inside the gates. As soon as you go in these gates here, just uh, make a left, and it's the very first section there. And in fact, let me just walk over. And this street here is Cherry Avenue. If you take this street all the way, I think maybe five, 10 miles that direction, you'll be at the beach. And I guess that's also why this is so, um, it's so foggy and overcast, you know, being so close to the beach. All right, so you come in the cemetery here, and this section right behind me. So when you come in through the front gates and make the first left, 
The first section on the right will be section A that you see there. This is the section where you'll find Frank Zamboni's gravesite, and it's just a short distance in from the uh, curb and from the street. So in case you want to visit this uh, gravesite, I'll pan around so you have a better idea of where it's located in relationship uh, to the rest of the uh, cemetery. The car that you see there straight ahead is driving toward the front gates where I came in. I would say this is would be considered a small to medium sized cemetery which should make it a little bit easier to find a grave that you might be looking for. But as I mentioned earlier, I wasn't able to find my friend Carl Verzilli's grave. But then again, it's possible that his gravesite is unmarked. So that could be the reason why I wasn't able to find it. Hopefully, if you decide to visit the cemetery, it'll be on a much nicer day than today. So thanks for joining me, as always, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, share it with a friend. This bush here is so fragrant. I don't know what this is. If anyone knows, let me know. It smells so good. It's probably doing a number on my allergies, but uh, sure, smell is wonderful. And uh, so I get sidetracked easily. There's a lot of things to see at the cemeteries. So anyway, if you'd like to see uh, future videos like this, uh, when I post them, if you'd like to be alerted when I post uh, future videos like this, please subscribe.